Hear me out. You have your Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with the 392 V8 engine that makes 470 horsepower. You have the Ford Bronco Raptor with its 3-liter twin-turbo V6 that makes 418 horsepower. Or this. Which would you choose? I'm Chris from Auto Academics, and today we're going to take a look at a 2022 Land Rover Defender 90 V8. For those of you unfamiliar with the Land Rover brand, the 90 in Defender 90 represents the shortest wheelbase of this truck, and the one with only two doors. There's also a four-door Defender 110 and an eight-passenger Defender 130, but we're experiencing the nimbler version with the big honking V8. Take a look. Loaded with capability is this Yulong White 2022 Land Rover Defender 90 V8. Standard features include premium LED headlights with signature daytime running lights, fog lamps, LED tail lamps, and rear fog lamps, power fold heated door mirrors with turn indicators, rear electronic active differential, 22 inch satin dark gray wheels wrapped in 275 45 series Continental Cross Contact RX all season tires, quad exhaust tailpipes, Brembo front brake calipers, illuminated V8 tread plates, black exposed rear recovery eyes, rain sensing front and rear wiper, rear privacy glass, Land Rover branded approach lights, and height adjustable air suspension. The interior houses a power adjustable suede cloth steering wheel, 14-way power adjustable ebony dynamica suede cloth and steel cut premium textile seats with memory, opening panoramic roof, heated and cooled front seats, heated rear seats, heated steering wheel, durable rubber cabin and load space flooring, three zone climate control with air quality sensor and cabin air ionization, front center console refrigerator, premium cabin lighting, clear sight interior rear view mirror, 10-inch PIVI Pro connected navigation system, 700-watt Meridian surround sound system, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, interactive driver display, USB port and domestic plug socket, wireless device charging with signal booster, head-up display, satin chrome gear shift paddles, rear center armrest, HD radio, twin speed transfer box, terrain response 2 with dynamic program, all terrain progress control, hill descent control, wade sensing, plenty of grab handles, and keyless entry with push button start. Safety and security features include a bunch of airbags, remote emergency collision notification, tire pressure monitoring, electronic traction control, stability control, and roll stability control, emergency braking, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, emergency brake assist, 3D surround camera, blind spot assist, lane keep assist, driver condition monitor, 360 degree parking aid, traffic sign recognition, adaptive speed limiter, clear exit monitor, and rear traffic monitor. Finally, the options consist of Wi-Fi with limited data plan, the premium interior protection and storage pack that includes the rear cargo shade, carpeted floor mats, and rubber trunk mats, and then there's the 11.4 inch touchscreen. Total MSRP is $106,710. I realize these new editions of iconic trucks sometimes get a bad rap, but they're truly better in the ways that most people actually use them. And that doesn't mean they're not still capable. Check out these 15-inch Brembo brakes tucked behind these 22-inch wheels. And while those might be great for the on-road stuff, this truck also has a maximum 11.5 inches of ground clearance, which will allow for a water fording depth of 35.4 inches all of which can be monitored by the wade sensing feature.
Don't want to get wet? <laughs> well, that kind of clearance is good for avoiding rocks, logs, and other land obstacles too. Open the rear door, you'll find that cargo space behind the rear seats is minimal with 10.5 cubic feet available. Fold the 40-20-40 rear seats down and you get a total 58.3 cubic feet. There are power points and grocery hooks back there, and a fabric cover can help hide your goods. The jack is located beneath the floor, and as you saw, the spare tire is located out back for easy access. A true gem of this Defender 90 is the supercharged 5-liter V8 engine that makes 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to an 8-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters and start-stop, sending power to all four wheels. Max towing is just over 7,700 pounds. This truck has a two-speed transfer case for high and low gearing, as well as a multitude of drive configurations courtesy of Land Rover's Terrain Response 2 system. It's customizable too, allowing you to adjust a number of different parameters to your liking. A plus of a powertrain like this is that you can exploit it for all it's worth, in spite of the weather. Zero to 60 miles per hour passes in just 4.9 seconds, and it doesn't stop until it reaches the top speed of 149 miles per hour. EPA estimated fuel economy is rated at 15 miles per gallon city, 19 miles per gallon highway, with a combined rating of 16 miles per gallon. Auto academics saw an average of 15.9 miles per gallon during testing on the recommended premium fuel. Nice. Sun's trying to come out, but we have other things to talk about. Access to the back seat isn't what I would call easy, but lowering the suspension definitely helps, as does this power front seat. Once inside, space is actually fairly generous. The seats are elevated in a stadium configuration and there's plenty of head, shoulder, and leg room. The cabin is airy too, thanks to this huge sunroof and these iconic windows in the ceilings. Throw in heated seats, dedicated climate control, and plenty of charge ports, including 5-volt examples in the back of the seats, and this isn't a bad place to be. Once you get back here. Once you get up front, you'll see that this truck has a utilitarian yet premium look with soft coverings that complement the exposed bolts. This is some of the softest suede or Alcantara I felt on a steering wheel, and it's a nice size that feels good in your hands. It's very airy in here too, but if you've never been initiated to Land Rover's ecosystem, the controls can take some getting used to. The infotainment system is responsive, and overall, Land Rover did a decent job incorporating a lot of features into a minimal amount of buttons, allowing for quite a bit of storage, too. So, now that we've addressed all of that, it's time to take it out and see how it drives. So, if you're truly comparing this with the Wrangler or Bronco, you'll definitely notice the improvement in ride quality, especially on-road. Now, full disclosure, I haven't driven a 392 Wrangler yet, or a Bronco Raptor for that matter, and while the Bronco isn't that bad, this is worlds better than a Wrangler. Now, don't get me wrong, 
I like both of those trucks and they match up well performance wise. But also like those trucks, I'm going to share some raves as well as some other things that Land Rover could improve upon. <laughs> For starters, the V8 is fantastic. Power delivery is smooth and strong and I love the sound. The brakes are good too. They have a nice progression of firmness in the pedal travel. The seats feel good too, but the bottom cushion is flat, allowing your legs to roll off the sides when you're going through corners. And that's a shame because cornering isn't so bad, even for a hardcore off-roader like this. A lot of that owes thanks to the adaptive air suspension. The turning radius is tidy the way a true off-roader should be, and visibility is great everywhere, except out the smallest rear window that's mostly hindered by the backseat headrests and spare tire. And finally, the cabin is quiet, with the exception of the low comforting rumble from the V8. Well, until you get to highway speeds. That's when physics takes over, alerting you to the difficulty that the wind is having getting past this boxy shape. But we all know that concessions must be made for any purpose-built high-performing vehicle. And like the Wrangler and Bronco, I'm good with that. So there you have it guys, the 2022 Land Rover Defender 90 V8. It's a premium off-road vehicle that just so happens to be really good on-road too. And that engine, fantastic. But I want to hear from you. Would you upgrade to one of these if money were no object? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss what we have coming up next. I'm Chris from Auto Academics. Thanks for watching.